Hello Grade 8 Math, this is 3.4 Multiplying Mixed Numbers. We're going to do a little review of something you might have done in previous grades. A mixed number, it's a fraction and a number up front. So for example, 2 and 1 third. Essentially what this is, if I were to draw this out, it would be talking about two whole circles. Let's say we're talking about pie charts or that kind of thing. It would be the two whole things plus one third of them. Okay. So two and one third, that's what this is talking about. Now, in order to be able to multiply mixed numbers, uh, one thing to do, uh, one strategy is to make it into a, what's called an improper fraction. So this is what's called a mixed fraction. Now we need to make it into an improper fraction. It's actually proper to do it sometimes. Sorry, that's a terrible joke. Okay, um, and how you do that, simply you take this and you look at our model here. If we broke this up into thirds, which are kind of a little hard to see here right now, we'd have how many pieces? One, two, three pieces there. One, two, three thirds right there. And we'd have one third here and add those up. Three plus three plus one is seven thirds. So if you ever have a question that has something like two and one thirds, well, it can be replaced with seven thirds. That's the first thing we should learn for multiplying mixed numbers. So we're going to use a model here to solve a uh, problem here. So this is um, a common uh, type of model. It's called a rectangle model. So for example, here we have two and one half times one and one third. What we're going to do here, uh, ignore the amount of size that I have here. Uh, as far as this shape. I'll try to keep it pretty good. But what we're going to do here is we're going to draw a rectangle ish. Sorry about my drawing. And we're just going to kind of break it up into pieces here where the width here is two, for example, and then this is half. Okay? And then we're going to break up here our other fraction. So our first fraction was the two and a half. And then our other one we're going to break up here so that we're going to be left with one and a third. Now, obviously, this should be a little bit smaller to be an actual third. Um, but I'm not doing it exactly to scale. And now to figure out this question, all we need to do is take the numbers that are directly to the side and below and multiply these. So we have one and two, we're gonna go one times two, which is two. We're gonna go two times a third. We're gonna go two times a third, which we learned last time. We just go two, to, or in lesson 3.1, two times one is two. So this is two thirds. And then we're going to go with this here. We have half here and one there. It's one times a half. 1 times a half, anything times 1 is just itself, so it's a half. And then a half times a third, which is a little small, so maybe I'll use a pencil for this. We have a half times 1 third. We we'll just multiply across. 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 3 is 6. Tried to bolden it, but this was 1 sixth. Now this product here is actually just the addition of all those things we just put there. Or, in some ways, it's, it's these things all added up because it's kind of a repeated addition. So I'm going to write down something here, one line that's maybe a little complicated, but it'll make sense. So we're going to start with 2 and a half is what we started out, times 1 and a third is actually equal to each of these things here. It's equal to 2 times 1 third plus 1 times 2 plus one half. Don't really need these brackets because it's still bed mass, but I'm writing in here one half times one third plus one times a half. Now just take a quick look here. Each of these parts that were part of our original qu uh, question, the two, the one, the half, and the third, count how many times they are down here. The two is here once, twice. The half is here once, twice. The one is here once, twice. And the third is here once, twice. Notice that 
that's how many times it is it here. And notice which numbers those multiply by. Each of the factors here, or uh, um, parts of the mixed fraction, actually multiply by the parts of the other one. And that's what gets added up here. And so our 2 times 1 third was this here, which was 2 thirds. Our 1 and, sorry, 1 times 2 was 2. Our uh, half times a third was 1 sixth. Our 1 times a half is a half. And then we add it up. How do we add it up? We add it up using our common denominator, which our biggest one here is 6. So 2 times 3 can give us to 6, divided by 3. I meant to write times. Times 3 is 6. And 3 times 2 is 6. So 2 times 2 is 4 sixths plus 2 plus 1 sixth plus 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. If we add these up, right here, how many 6 do we have? We have 4 plus 3 plus 1 is 8 6 plus 2. And we can take out one group of 6 here, right? We can take one out and make this, make this one bigger. So we have 3. And how many are left over? If we take six of these away, there'd be two left over, so it's two sixths. And then finally, can we simplify this? Two sixths? Yes, we can. We can make it one, three, and one third. Some of you might be wondering, well, like, where does this whole model come from? I'm not sure if you remember back in the day when we do some multiplication where it was, you know, three times three and the area inside was what the answer was. Three times three is nine. Well, essentially, this is just the same thing. It's just now you have different sections that deal with the different areas in here, and the sum of the areas is the whole thing. Here's an example. Three and three-eighths times four and two-thirds. Well, let's take these and make them into improper fractions. So let's start with this one here. 3 and 3 eighths, remember that's the same thing as 3 plus 3 eighths, right? And if we make this into a fraction that has 8 as its denominator, well, 3 times 8 is 24, so this is 24 eighths plus 3 eighths. Now that they have the same denominator, add it up, 27 eighths. This one here, we're going to turn into also the same thing, 4 plus 2 thirds. We need thirds on the bottom. What's 3 times 4? That's 12 thirds plus 2 thirds, which equals, let's just separate that so it's not getting confused, uh, is 14 thirds. So we can say that 3 and 3 eighths times 4 and 2 thirds is equal to 27 eighths times 14 thirds. We can write this as, oh, bump my camera, 27 times 14 divided by 8 times 3. Now I'm going to show you something cool here. Um, this might take a little bit longer to multiply it out, so Here's another idea. We have some common factors here amongst here. I'm just going to switch the order of these. I'm going to write 14 times 27 over um, 8 times 3. Why? Because I've noticed something. 27 and 3 both have some common factors, right? 27 can divide by 3 and become 9. 3 can divide by 3 and become 1. So that means that we could turn this into that 27 by dividing by that same factor, dividing by 3, we could turn this into a 9 and this into a 1. And looking here, 14 can divide by 2 and become 7, and 8 can divide by 2, a common factor, and become 4. So we're going to divide those by 2 and make this into 7 over 4, which is a whole lot more manageable, right? 
7 times 9 is 63, and 4 times 1 is 4. And we end up with 63 quarters. Now, sometimes uh, you'll be asked to put it back into mixed fraction. Improper fractions are good for calculating, but usually they're not very applicable uh, for the real world. So we should switch this back to our uh, mixed fraction. There's lots of different ways to figure out how to get that back to there that you may have learned in the past. But one thing I've realized is 4 times 10 is 40. 4 times 5 is 20. And 40 plus 20, those numbers there, is 60. Which, if I were to add 4 to it, it would be too high for that. So that means that this 10 plus 5 is my 15 that's there. And how many are left over? Well, 63 subtract 60 is 3. So that means there's 3 quarters left over. So 15 and 3 quarters is my answer for this question. Now, this is that same question. What if I were to estimate it? Well, looking here, 3 and 3 quarters is, let's say, 3. And 4 and 2 thirds is let's say 5, let's round up to 5. This one will round down, this one will round up. 3 times 5 is 15. Was I close to 15? I was pretty close, fit with 15 and 3 quarters. So uh, that's just a quick way to check. Um, take one of those and round it up, and one and round it down, and if it's close, you're in a good spot. And that is this lesson.